This is the Tier 8 Blitz Nation Heavy, the Ground Tank. A vehicle which does not look like it belongs in World of Tanks Blitz. It's a cool tank, and I don't think it's ugly. Some of the vehicles Wargaming adds into the game look really ugly. Looking at you, Forest Witch, Lupus. There's a lot of Blitz Nation Tier 7s that are kind of ugly. The Annihilator is pretty ugly, I'm not gonna lie. The Vulcan, ugh, that might be one of the worst looking tanks in the game. I actually think this vehicle looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's a really unique design, and uh, I actually like the style it has going for it. However, I don't believe personally that this is a tank that really fits in World of Tanks Blitz, especially in Tier 8, where you have vehicles like the Tiger 2. It's just so weird seeing this matched up against, you know, Germans and things that are normally World War II, maybe slightly later era vehicles. When it comes to this tank statistics, it features a 130 millimeter, which deals 440 damage per shot, which is pretty good. It's got really good pen, 230 on the standard and impressively 280 on the premium. It's got okay DPM at 1800. Taming time and dispersion are pretty bad, but it's what you expect for a high alpha 130 mil in tier eight. This vehicle features a mechanic called Desert Force. It's the same mechanic you'll find on the Pharaoh if you're driving on desert terrain. So any map like Black Goldville, it actually tells you the maps here. So we got Desert Sands, Black Goldville, Oasis, and Wasteland. This tank will drive 50% faster, which is actually nice. And it has better module repair speed. So it's kind of a cool mechanic. Nine degrees of gun depression and a top speed of 37. Unfortunately, there are some bad things going for this tank. For example, the tank turns at 23 degrees a second, making this literally the slowest turning tier 8 in the game. And by the way, that's 23 degrees a second on hard terrain. I don't even know what it turns on medium because the stats aren't fully out yet, but I bet it's at least 18 or 17. It is awful on traverse speed. It reverses at 12. So essentially, if you need to turn and there's somebody trying to flank you, good luck. Now, even though this tank is absolutely massive, it's actually not larger than a mouse. It looks like it's larger, and it is a little bit wider. But in terms of the actual profile, the mouse is longer, and it is a little bit taller. So that is something you should keep in mind. You can actually see my stats right here as what I've been doing in the vehicle so far today, and it's surprisingly well. I'm going, what, 84% win rate with 2,580 average damage, which, as I said, is surprisingly good for this tier 8 heavy. The armor is honestly quite a big letdown. The turret is just not good. It needs more turret armor, and that is the major problem with the vehicle. Its hull is also awful. It's got a lot of weaknesses on the hull that, if you understand where to shoot, will easily rip it apart. At most angles, you can cut through the track wheel, and you'll butter right through, uh, which is a big problem. The biggest problem with this tank, though, is the size. This vehicle is huge. And being in a tank this large in Tier 8 is bad. And it really shouldn't be that much, you know, explaining needed to be done. Everybody just wants to shoot this thing. Bro, there's no way I'm stuck. This is another problem with being this large. You get stuck on everything. Oh my rat. I can't believe we actually got stuck that long on that there. But, um, yeah. This tank is massive. Everybody wants to shoot you. You're a massive pinata, and literally everywhere you go, there's just a big shoot me sticker pasted on the tank. And when you pair that with the fact that this vehicle's armor is really only effective when you're using it directly at what you're aiming at, it's uh, it's not a great combination. But 130 millimeter does hit pretty hard, 598 damage, so not too bad of a result right there. I have learned, after messing around with this vehicle for a bit, that actually over-angling the sides is the best way to drive this vehicle. If you over-angle the sides, you will get way more bounces than if you rely on the actual frontal protection. And that's just a fact. So I would highly recommend when you drive this vehicle to turn it side on like this. Let vehicles like this AMX aim it on your side and they might bounce. However, we now have a Pantera on our side, which is a little cringe. So we've let a bit of health. We can actually see that where we got penned was uh, kind of cringe, but let me just bonk this T-77 really quickly. Yeah, where we got penned was this uh, little flat spot, and we can see the other shell went through our turret. As I said, the turret is the major weak spot on this vehicle. It is really bad. It's, it's awful, actually. The turret will constantly get penned, and you will not enjoy it. Now, we got the T-77. 
doubt he's going to let me shoot him. We're just going to back up, and uh, we might be able to bonk the T-32. Just give me a moment. Got to slightly back up here. Aiming, aiming, and... Oh, really? All right, well, we got the Pantera again, and I'm going to aim at him here. Hopefully he bounces me, but we'll see. CS is at least distracting him a bit, but now we got the T-77. Again, being this large, everybody wants to shoot at you. Every single tank and their mother. And because of that, again, the armor just does not feel very effective on the tank. You're way too freaking big. But we'll see what we can do here. We've gotten some damage out. The uh, Pantera got bonked, which is pretty good, actually, for us. Um, T-77 moved up. Got the Pantera showing me his side, and there you go. But, look, look at that. Again, we shoot at one player, and our turret's poking for the other tank to shoot at me. The tank's just so freaking big. It really is. Alright, well, let's see if we can get a shell into the T-32, possibly, aiming on his hatch. There you go. Nice 366 damage shell. I mean, this is a pretty good battle. I got no complaints. But, again, like... Look at where the T-77 has. Look at the roof. Like, the tank is just huge. And you can see, like, we did pretty good in this game. The gun did all right. The, the vehicle itself did all right. But the sheer size of it made it impossible for us to hide our armor. We have a pen on almost every single orifice on this vehicle. We got two pens on this side of the turret. We got one on the upper plate. We got one on the roof of the turret, one on the top part, one on the mantlet. Just everywhere you look, there's a pen in this vehicle. And you can obviously easily understand how this is the problem with the tank. Now, even though our Skoda clearly doesn't know how to aim, we should still be able to win this game, as we have a 1,000 health go. And all this yo has to do is double shot the T-77. There's one. There's two. And we get a win. So not a bad start for the ground tank. God, what a lame name. It really is just an awful name. So let's see how we did in this battle. There you go. 3,400 damage. We were able to block 1,070. And we got a first class. So not an awful result. Again, I mean, I do surprisingly well in the vehicle. But to be fair, if I was in a Skoda T-56, which features a similar 130 in terms of accuracy, slightly worse accuracy, but still pretty similar, uh, it's just a much more mobile, smaller profile, which is obviously a heck of a lot better. There is one thing the ground tank is good at, though, and that is ramming. This vehicle weighs 110 tons. That means if you got some lightly armored heavies, oh man, can you ram them really hard. However, the ramming's kind of weird on this vehicle, because even though it weighs 110 tons, you also don't out-ram sometimes. I literally have gone up against an IS-2, and you'll touch the vehicle and you'll lose health, but they won't. I don't know. Wargaming clearly doesn't know what they're doing when it comes to the ramming on this vehicle. But uh, if you can get a full speed ram, because this tank is actually able to accelerate pretty fast, uh, you can get some pretty dangerous numbers out. So let's see what we can do. We have an action 10, we've got an IS-5. Personally, I'm hoping that we can just poke the midridge here. Again, you can see surprisingly, this tank is pretty mobile. Like, we are chilling at 38 kilometers per hour right now. The tank is not slow. Unless you need to reverse or turn, then it's awful. We got a nice pen. Uh, I'm going to over-angle the sides. As I said, over-angling the sides is where you're actually going to get the majority of your bounces. We got the T-77 in front of us. We got the Swindler off to the side. We got vehicles all over us right now. And that's not exactly what I want. Let's just name it on the Rev. There you go. Easy pen. All right, not too bad. Not too bad at all. We've got two shells out. Oh, boy. What is our... Okay. Well, there goes one of our teammates. What a great player. All right, let's aim in on the rev. Bonk, there you go. How is our FE-301 not dead? What am I watching? This is not real. This is not real. Oh my. All right, well, we got five more seconds left before we get another shell. Um, got a couple options here. Personally, I think the T-77 is the smartest player to shoot at. Let's over-angle the sides. Oh, I thought the Swindler was gonna try and shoot me. I guess not. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now so I'm going to ignore the Swindler. I'm going to try and ram the uh, Action 10. Well, maybe not. Oh, there you go. 89 damage. Well, it's better than nothing, to be honest. Uh, we're kind of stuck on him here, but there you go. Not too bad. 
As we can see, this vehicle is just such a funky tank to go up against. It's actually not very well armored in a face hug, so while it may look like it is, it's it's not. That's just something to keep in mind. Get another nice pen into the action. This guy has no clue what to do, and there you go. Good example of the ramming, but we did lose a pretty decent chunk as well. We can see this action is, uh, he's figuring out my weak spots here, but we were able to do all right. By the way, do you see the traverse speed on this thing? It's, it's bad. It's really bad, but hey, another win. I do surprisingly well in this tank. I don't know why. I, I seriously don't know why. It's not a very good vehicle, but the gun hits hard and the armor is all right. You will get more bounces in this vehicle than you will an average tier 8, just because of how many weird angulars it has, the turret, everything about the tank is super weird. So you will get bounces, and you can do quite well. I mean, that was a 3,300 damage game, so we just got two 3,000 games back to back. What is my overall opinion on this vehicle? I would give it a 6 out of 10. It is not a tank that I would recommend to just pull out and have fun in, when you have tech trees like the VK100, which have more armor, a better gun with more alpha damage, and just a more consistent playstyle, or a Tiger II, which has better mobility, more DPM. But I will say, in terms of fun, this is actually quite a fun tank. As long as you're not getting absolutely dissected from every angle due to the weird turret armor, this is actually a really, really cool vehicle. The way that it plays, just everything about it, I think it's really cool. As I said, I personally don't think it really fits into the game. I think it would be more suited as tier 7. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about the ground tank. It's just such a weird vehicle. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.